Hmm. I normally only work on one to two figures at a time, but since the guardians are in uniform, I feel like I must do them as a group. Okay, I know Groot is part of the team too, but I don't have the figure yet. I'll work on Groot once I get it. I do have Baby Groot and Teenage Groot though. Hello, this is Ken. I like making things. I like making things out of paper, and I like making things cooler, especially my figures. Sometimes figures don't look all that screen accurate. All they need is a bit of touch up here and there to unleash the hidden potential. I also love using everyday tools and materials to recreate iconic scenes from my figures, so they can shine on my display. Subscribe to my channel and join my DIY adventure as I ask myself the same question every week. Can I make it? I actually don't have a lot of the Guardians from Volume One and Two. In my opinion, a lot of them looked off. But that was right before they started doing the face printing thing, so a lot of the figures still had that cartoonish look to them. Especially Drax, the Marvel Select one looks so much better, and it came with a somewhat poseable Baby Groot too. Check out last week's video if you want to see how awesome they are. I also didn't want Rocket because it felt like a ripoff, you know, since he's a smaller figure, and the figure reminds me of one of those Animal Kingdom toys you get as a kid. Okay, fine. Those toys aren't posable, but that's kind of how I see Rocket and Star Lord. They couldn't get his likeness right on four separate occasions. Volume one was 2014, so that's acceptable. But they should have done the face printing thing for Volume two, and who knows what happens to the Love and Thunder one? It is actually really smart to have the Guardians in the same uniform this time. Not only do they now look like one cohesive team, I also can't be as selective anymore too. It's either get them all or none at all. Thankfully, they nailed most of these new figures, especially Star Lord. They finally captured Chris Pratt's likeness, and since I don't have the majority of these characters from previous releases, it's hard not to get the entire wave. So, let's, let's deconstruct, deconstruct this figure. figure. There is an FAQ on the paint and brushes I use in the description box below. This new Starlord figure looks great, but what surprises me is that the arms and legs are reused from the previous Starlords. The only new parts are the torso and the awesome head. Drax looks better than the previous versions, in my opinion, but he still has odd proportions. And unlike the Marvel Select version, I can actually store his knives in his boots. Such a small detail, but I love it. They also improved the face. He now looks more like Dave Bautista. The Nebula figure is the one I'm least excited about, but this is actually a new head. She doesn't have that cybernetic eye patch thing on the left eye, so that's really cool. Mantis share the same body as Nebula, understandably, but this new head looks stunning. It is so good. And finally, Rocket. On one hand, he does look like Rocket. All the necessary details are molded in and painted, so I do appreciate that, especially for a smaller figure. But the face, he looks feral. And not in a good way. Overall, I think all the Guardians look great. The movie hasn't come out yet as of the filming of today's video, and I try to avoid watching too many trailers and teasers to avoid getting spoiled. But I think the blue on the suits is much more muted in the movie. The blue they used is nice, and I did find some promotional images where the suits appear to be in this shade of blue. But I believe the suits are much lighter in the movie. At least according to these shots, so I'm going to use these as my references. Hope I get it right. So, can I make it? I'm going to work on Drax first, since he has the most surface area to play with. Then I'll repeat the same process onto the rest of the team. Oh, before I paint, let me sand the figure first. This blue plastic feels slippery. Sanding it should make the paint stick onto the surface better. I do sometimes skip this step if the figures have too much texture, though. All right, let me start by painting a thin layer of this royal blue first. It is a very similar shade, maybe a touch lighter. 
This thin layer of paint acts as the base. I find that I have more control if I do finer details on the base layer of paint rather than directly on the plastic. Paint grips onto paint better. Alright, with the base layer done, it already looks pretty good matte. But I want the blue to be less vibrant. Hmm, let me try adding a bit of this green onto the back. I wonder if these two will neutralize each other and turn grayish. Let's see. Hmm, it is turning lighter, but I don't know how I feel about it. I'm gonna undo it by covering it up with the blue again. Okay, let me use the light blue instead. This blue is too light, so I'm only gonna use it as my highlighting color. And I'm gonna blend it out until it's barely there. Now I'm gonna add a bit of shading to the suit to make it look less flat. And to emphasize the details a bit too. Ah, it's looking pretty good. I like this. But it looks a bit too chalky or dusty. Let me apply a thin coat of matte varnish over it. This will add a clear thin film over the paint, making it appear slightly more rubbery, but not in a glossy way. Now let me add the missing details back in. There are these unpainted black straps on the gauntlets. And I'm also going to dust a bit of the black onto the boots. They look too shiny. Oh, can't forget his gloves. I believe Trax is wearing gloves in the movie, like his fellow guardians. Mmm, I got some leftover black paint, so let me use a damp brush to fill in the lines on the suit, to make it look more interesting. Oh, I found more missing details, like the buckles on his thighs and the straps on the side of his torso. Alright, the suit looks pretty good. I would stop here. But the suit actually looks darker now with all the added details. My original goal was to make the blue lighter. And it kind of reverted itself back to its original color. So let me try something else. I'm going to mix the two blues to get something in the middle. Not too light but not too vibrant either. And because I don't want to cover up the entire figure, I'm going to use the matte medium again. I used this last week to add a translucent layer of brown on Drax. So let me do the same here but with a translucent layer of light blue instead. I hope this works. Alright, here's what it looks like. It is lighter now, but I'm still not 100% happy with the color yet. Let me try that green again. Maybe if I keep trying, it'll work. But this time, I'm gonna dilute it with the matte medium again, so the green doesn't become too overpowering. Please work, please work, please work. Okay, done. The green is still there, but I think it's because I'm aware of it. Let me move on to the red straps. The straps appear to have a different shade in every other reference image. So I'm going to go with what I like best. I prefer a cooler, more purplish red. Let me go over all the straps with it to cool it down. Done. I also extended the straps a bit on its thighs but they also look too matte now. So I'm going to add a thin coat of glossy varnish over the red straps to give them that leathery shine. Ta-da! Okay, I'm very happy with how this turned out. So let me repeat the same steps to the other guardians. Starting by sanding the figures, applying the base layer, highlights, shading, a layer of matte varnish, the missing straps, the green layer, and the red straps. I could have skipped some steps, but I want the overall look to be consistent, so I repeated every single procedure. They sure look great though, especially as a group. I think I nailed the colors right. Before I work on the faces, let me quickly work on the weapons first. I'm glad they included Rocket's gun. I love this gun. 
I'm gonna make it look more metallic by applying a thin coat of gunmetal over certain parts of it. And I'm also gonna add some highlights with the silver to further add depth to the gun. Look at that, nice and shiny. Nebula's gun looked too basic and rubbery, so I'm gonna do the same thing. A coat of gunmetal color and a bit of silver highlight. Ta-da! Much better. I prefer this gun. Maybe size does matter. But it has the same rubbery issue. So let's fix that as well. Next, Drax's knives. These are a bit of a disappointment because the Marvel Select Drax came with perfectly painted knives. I'm going to rub a thin coat of the gunmetal onto the handles. I'm going to try and keep the paint thin to minimize paint rub. And I'm going to go over the blades for the silver. Can't forget those red details. Nebula's blade is... meh. It looks blunt and looks very toy-like. Let me see if I can make it look better. Starting with the gunmetal color again. I also want the blade to look hotter like plasma or something. So I'm going to paint the tip and the edges of the blade yellow to make it appear hotter. Alright, not the smoothest paint job, but I think it looks pretty decent. On to the heads. Let's start with Peter Quill. I think mine has a minor paint issue. The lips look a bit too pouty, especially on this side of the face. I also find the overall color to be a bit too saturated, so let me tone it down a bit. I also want to define his facial hair a bit more too. I'm going to use a variety of browns to give the facial hair more dimension, so it doesn't look like random blobs of paint. While I'm at it, let me do the same to his brows too. And the hair. Gotta tone down the vibrancy as well. Uh, this doesn't look right. Let me blend it out. Okay, it's too light now. Let's add some shading back in. Okay, here's the finished Starlord head. Not much has changed. It was a great head to begin with, but it looks more natural now. Next, Drax. I actually really like the skin color. I think they nailed the muted green skin tone. The overall colors do appear a bit flat though. Let me add a thin wash of dark brown to add a bit of shading. And I'm gonna go over his tattoos for the red to make them more vibrant and defined. Look how much better that looks. Alright, here's Drax. The red looks so much more prominent now. The brown also made the skin greener for some reason. Here's Mantis. This head looks amazing. I noticed that the eyes are actually on a separate layer behind the face. I quite like that. It adds a bit of realism to the face. The only thing missing are the paint on the tips of her antennas. It's hard to describe the colors of her antennas. They're kind of translucent and glowing. So I'm going to apply a thin coat of silver to replicate that look. I think this is one of the best MCU heads Hasbro has done recently. The face looks so good. Nebula is next. This head is also pretty good. Nebula does have this cloudy coloring texture, so let me see if I can replicate that by applying a thin coat of light blue over the face, including the purple areas in the middle. Nebula also has really dark eyes, so let's add a bit of black to the pupils. And let me use the rest of the black on my brush to do the panel lines. Mmm, the texture kind of looks chalky. So let me apply a thin coat of the matte varnish over the face to add a very subtle shine. Oh, the head looks pretty much the same. I could have just done the panel lines. 
And finally, Rocket. He doesn't look very friendly. When looking at reference images, I noticed that his fur is actually much darker. So I'm going to add some dark brown to deepen the color. But I'm letting the original brown to still come through as a gradient color. I'm also going to add a bit of the lighter color to his eyebrows and his chin. Okay, those eyes are still too scary. Let me darken them a bit. And I'll add a dab of glossy varnish over them so they glisten against the dark fur. Aww, Rocket doesn't look as feral anymore. He looks more cuddly now. Alright, it is finally time to do the comparisons. Here's Star-Lord. Oh wow, the suit is a completely different color now. It's been so long that I kind of forgot what the original blue color looks like. The overall figure looks much more natural now. The original figure is still pretty good, especially the head. I'm so happy to finally have a Star Lord that looks like Chris Pratt. Here's Strax. This may be my least favorite one of the group. Strax still has this segmented look to him. The proportions still look a bit strange to me. Like he looks short, but he isn't. I really like the design of the suit though. There are a lot of nicely molded details. And it was pretty fun to paint them. The face isn't that bad. I just wish they used a deeper red on the tattoos. Mantis is awesome. I think the new colors suit her more. It actually resembles some sort of space suit. The head is close to perfection in my opinion. They captured her likeness very well. And the paint they use on the face is really good. It's just the antennas that needed more paint. I also went in and fixed the emblem on the chest. For some reason, Hers was very badly sculpted. Nebula shares the same body except for a cybernetic arm. I did go over the arm with a black wash, and a bit of silver to add the shine back in. The head is also pretty good. Maybe except for her eyes? The darker pupils fit her character more. And doing the panel lines also helped add to her character. And last but not least, Rocket. The suit was quite challenging to paint due to its small size. But the darker fur and eyes look much better than the original. They should have used a darker brown. A relatively easy fix. Oh, and here are all four of my Star Lords. This new one is definitely the best. It's kind of funny to me that they've been using the same legs for all the Star Lord figures. Except, they took away the two studs on his hips this time. And here's the team all together. Minus Groot. I really like how they look as a group. And since I haven't seen the movie yet, let me know if I captured the suit's color right. But don't spoil the movie. I hope I got them right. Because I'm not going to work on these anymore. The layers are starting to become thick. The thicker the paint, the harder it is to pose. Forgive me for the lack of dynamic poses. The shoulder pads on these figures kind of go right against the shoulders. So I'm going to avoid lifting the arms out too much to prevent paint rub. I didn't think I was going to add so many layers of paint. Normally, I try to keep it under 3 to 4 thin layers. The base layer, highlights, and shadows. And maybe one more for any final fixes. That way, there isn't too much build up. But because I wasn't satisfied with the color of the suit, I kept adding more and more layers of paint and varnish over the suit. I can tell that the paint is starting to get too thick. Luckily, it hasn't affected how the figure looks yet as the details are still visible. But it is affecting the joints. Some of the swivel joints are kind of stuck together now. I could go in with a knife and separate the parts again. 
but I need to stop. I worked on these figures for way too long. Doing 5 figures within a week is way too much for me. But I did achieve my goal of changing the suit's color to make them more screen accurate. At least I think I did. What do you think? Do you like how the Guardians turned out? Let me know down below. Let's enjoy the rest of this montage before I do the photo shoot. Photo shoot time! Starting with Star Lord. I don't know what it is, but I really, really, really like the Star Lord. Even though he isn't wearing his classic red jacket. Maybe because the jackets didn't translate well in figure form. Without the coat, Star Lord now looks much more natural. Speaking of natural, the face is so good. I did have to go in and fix the mouth a bit but they totally captured the likeness of Chris Pratt. And not just that, the face actually looks like a real human face too. It makes the figure look very high quality, unlike the other Star-Lords, where the likenesses were a bit off, giving them that uncanny valley vibe. Rocket Raccoon was a surprise for me. I was ready to not like this figure, but I love how it turned out. It is hard to balance him, but that tail of his is super useful. And I love that gun. I'm very happy they included it. Mantis made me my favorite of the group. She doesn't have that toy feel to her. Kudos to Hasbro. I think they really stepped up their game with this wave. I also think they're capturing the right expressions. All of these figures have neutral expressions on them, except for Rocket. But they don't look bored. Instead, you can kind of get the feel of the personalities or backstories even though they're not emoting. It's so subtle but quite effective in my opinion. I do prefer more neutral expressions rather than angry or yelling faces. That said, I still prefer the Marvel Select Drax. That one looks just like Drax. Nebula is okay. I wasn't expecting much, since she's pretty much just Mantis with a different head and arm, but I'm glad they gave her three different weapons. My favorite thing out of today's video is the blade. The original blade was quite bland, but I love how hot it looks now. I didn't really have any reference images to look at, so I just went with my gut feelings and it turned out amazing. I got these figures from Toy Snowman. They offer free shipping over a certain amount. Go check it out if you're interested. And you can use my referral code to get a 5% coupon too. The link is in the description. Alright. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Give this video a like and subscribe if you want to see more content like this. I'm going to do the rest of the wave as well. And as always, stay inspired and I'll see you next week. I can make it, so can you.